Have you ever wondered what it might be like to be given a name that everyone instantly recognizes? I'm sure Joseph E. Friday's parents didn't realize it at the time, but when they gave him the name Joe Friday, they pretty much guaranteed that their son would be instantly recognized for someone that he wasn't. And they had absolutely no idea that their son would actually become an officer of the law. More on that in just a moment, but first let me introduce myself. Hi folks, my name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and television. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. So with that said, let's get rolling. If you're watching this video, then I'm quite certain you know that Dragnet was one of the biggest hits of early television. The show actually started out on radio in 1949 and then moved to TV in 1951. And that version of Dragnet would run until 1959. And then eight years later, Jack Webb would bring the show back for an additional four seasons. The program and its main character, played by Jack Webb, Sergeant Joe Friday, well, it was iconic. During the 50s, 60s, and even 70s, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who hadn't heard of Dragnet. Which brings us to the topic of this video. A real-life feller named Joe Friday, born in 1926, so his parents had no clue that the name they'd bestowed upon him would cause him so much grief. Born in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, and raised in Milwaukee, Joe Friday served in the Army in Europe and Africa during World War II. It was during the Battle of the Bolts that Joe and another soldier got caught behind enemy lines. And if not for the kindness of civilians who risked their lives to hide the two soldiers, this story would be over before it even started. Fortunately for everyone involved, Joe and the other soldier made it back to their company safe and sound. After the war, Mr. Friday worked various jobs until he found his calling as a police officer in 1954. And it wasn't all that long after Joe had been hired by the Milwaukee Police Department that he received an unexpected telegram from Jack Webb. You see, when creating Dragnet, Jack thought that he'd picked a name for his character that no other police officer would actually have. So upon discovering that there was a newly hired officer with his character's name, he felt like he needed to reach out. The telegram said, Very best wishes on your new job from both of us, Joe Friday and me. At the time, while the real Joe Friday thought it was pretty neat to get a telegram from someone like Jack Webb, he had no clue what sharing that famous name would mean for his career in law enforcement. You see, for the next three decades, Joe would find himself saying things like, This is Joe Friday of the Milwaukee Police. Well, my name is Joe Friday. No, I'm not putting you on. I guess it's not all that hard to understand that people would need to be convinced that they were actually talking to a real police officer named Joe Friday. And night times at home were even worse, because Joe would get phone calls all night long, sometimes at 3 and 4 in the morning, and as you might expect, most of the time it was just kids who would sing dum da dum dum and then hang up giggling. Yep, when Jack Webb sent that telegram to the real Joe Friday in 1954, I have to believe that he had a pretty darn good idea what Joe was in for. And for that reason, Jack Webb never forgot about his true life counterpart pounding the pavement in Milwaukee. So when Jack found himself in Wisconsin to promote his new movie Pete Kelly's Blues, one of the first things that he did was track down Officer Friday and formally apologize for all of the hassle that he was experiencing. Jack also took Joe and his wife to dinner where he listened intently to the real-life police officer talk about what his job was really like. For years, Joe would fondly recall that evening and tell his children that it was so very enjoyable and that Jack Webb had been the perfect host. After dinner that evening, he felt like they had become close friends. The real Joe Friday retired in 1986. And whenever he could find a grandchild to lend a willing ear, he would regale them with stories from the field, as well as that special evening when Jack Webb met the real Joe Friday. After retiring, Joe would live a fairly quiet life for another 15 years before passing away on September 18, 2001. Lung cancer was the culprit. He was 75 years old. At the time of his passing, Joe's wife Mary said that the thing that he would probably want to be remembered most for was not his famous name but rather that he was a devoted husband and father and grandfather. 
Getting back to Jack Webb, when he died in 1982, the Los Angeles Police Department provided him with full police honors. According to the New York Times, flags at the LAPD headquarters and outposts were flown at half-staff, and a police escort was offered to Webb's family for his funeral, and badge number 714 was retired. To my knowledge, this is the only time that the LAPD has done this for a civilian. All right, now it's your turn. Please share your thoughts in the comments section. And while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I would be absolutely honored if you would consider subscribing to my little channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly television from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.